So a lot of you have been requesting this video on how I would learn DevOps in 2024. We are right at June. So 50% of 2024 is done, but you still got time. Hi, I'm Rishab and this is Rishab in Cloud. I started in tech as tech support specialist and then moved to cloud engineering, spent two years in that role and then became a DevOps engineer. My transition was very natural and I'll tell you why towards the end. But in this video, I wanted to cover, you know, what are some skills, what kind of roadmap I would follow if I had to learn DevOps in 2024. Before we start, let's talk about what DevOps is. So DevOps is the combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increase an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high speed. So this speed enables organizations to better serve their customers and compete more effectively in the market. Now I've got a really cool diagram, which I believe is from AWS about how DevOps works. So you got your company here, uh, the blue on the right is customers, and then you got build, test, release, which is the delivery pipeline. So your developers build your application, your QA engineers test them, and then it is released, which is then taken care of by the operations or the cloud team to deploy it to the cloud or your own data centers. Now you monitor that application and see how customers are engaging with it. And then you also plan what would be the next steps to improve and evolve your application further. So this is in a nutshell, like what DevOps looks like. How the DevOps model work is that development and operations are no longer siloed. So they are not separate. They work collectively as a team. Now moving on to the roadmap. So DevOps in 2024, I both have a diagram here, so, and a document ready. But in a nutshell, this is what it all boiled down to, but we'll go over bit by bit. So the core DevOps philosophy, um, as I said, you know, collaboration, automation, and continuous improvement is what we are looking at. So DevOps breaks down silos between development and operation teams. The goal is seamless cooperation to deliver software faster and more reliably. Automation means automating repetitive tasks. So testing, deployment, infrastructure, provisioning, all of this can be automated and is a fundamental DevOps practice. This reduces errors, speeds, speeds up the process, and frees up teams for higher value work. Now next, we have continuous improvement. So DevOps embraces a mindset of constant learning and adaptation. Teams monitor systems, gather feedback, and iteratively refine their processes. Now, coming to the actual roadmap, now that we understand DevOps. So phase one is fundamentals and it includes Git, Linux, and networking. Why Git? So the first one is version control, and I went with Git because it's the most popular. So learn to track changes, create branches, merge code, and resolve conflicts. Understand Git workflows. So there's different type of workflows that development teams can follow, and you will follow as well because you'll have you know, all of this automation scripts and infrastructure as code that will live in a Git repository. So there are a few different uh, flows that you need to understand or you might use. One is Git flow and then there's GitHub flow and there are others that people have invented. Practice using Git with platforms like GitHub or GitLab. I personally use GitHub, but you can also use GitLab or Azure DevOps. The tool doesn't matter. It's the practice that matters. Second, within our fundamentals is Linux basics. So get comfortable with the command line. Learn basic file management, permissions, and package installation. Explore common Linux distributions like Ubuntu, CentOS, any Debian flavor would also work. Um, why Linux, you might ask? Most of the servers that are within cloud that are hosting amazing services like Netflix, YouTube, Google, right? Most of them are running on Linux servers. So you need to understand the operating system in order to be a DevOps engineer. The third within the fundamentals is networking fundamentals. This, no doubt, is very important. You need to understand TCP IP, DNS, HTTP, and basic network troubleshooting. Learn about firewalls, load balancers, and basic security concepts. Scripting is the fourth item within our fundamentals. So automate simple tasks with script. 
learn variables, loops, conditional statements, and file manipulation. So I would recommend getting familiar and proficient in one programming language, and it can be Python, can be Go. I recommend Python because it's easy to read. And if you're just starting out, I think it is, the learning curve is less. Uh, and I have a great resource. So go to seven days of Python and all of these things are covered on seven days of python.com. But yeah, you need to be proficient in scripting. So phase two is infrastructure and configuration. The first one within phase two is cloud providers. This comes with no doubt. You need to know at least one cloud provider, and this can be any cloud provider of your choice. AWS, Azure, GCP, those are the three big ones. Learn its core services, you know, what are their compute offerings, storage offerings, database offerings, and networking. Understand concepts like regions, availability zones, and scalability. And if you can't decide which cloud provider, please do your research, look at the job market in your city, see which cloud providers has most job posting. So like, I don't know, maybe there are 10 jobs out there that have AWS as the required cloud provider. So learn AWS. The second within the infrastructure and configuration phase is IC, also known as infrastructure as code. Use tools like Terraform or CloudFormation to define infrastructure in code, which basically means you'll be using these code files to provision infrastructure instead of going through the console or the UI of that cloud provider. Manage infrastructure changes with version control. So you'll be storing these infrastructure as code files with Git on GitHub or GitLab. Configuration management is the third one in this phase. So automate the configuration of the servers and application. Remember, automation is a core principle within DevOps. So all of these infrastructure as code and configuration management tools will help you automate your infrastructure provisioning and also configuring. So automate the configuration of servers and applications, ensure consistent and reproducible setups. Moving on to phase three, which is also important, which is CICD, also known as continuous integration and continuous delivery. So understand the concepts of building, testing, and deploying code automatically. I recommend using Jenkins or GitHub Actions, right? So you, you can pick. I personally use GitHub Actions a lot. There's also GitLab CI/CD, and there's also Azure DevOps. So if you're looking for something that's free and easy to use, I would go with GitHub Actions and set up CI/CD pipelines for your projects. Phase four is containerization. Within containerization, first you'll need to learn Docker, package applications and dependencies into portable containers. That's what Docker allows you to do, which means you don't have to worry about, you know, if your own environment is different than the cloud environment while you're testing the application locally. Once it's a container, it has its own isolated environment with the necessary packages that are required. So it'll stay the same on your own machine and it'll stay the same when you deploy it to the cloud. That's the power of containers. Learn Docker commands and image management. The second is also very important and is very trending right now, which is container orchestration. So once you have many containers, which you will have if you are hired as a DevOps engineer at you know some company, you will have multiple containers that you need to orchestrate and manage. That's where Kubernetes comes in. So manage and scale containerized application across clusters. Learn basic Kubernetes concepts, pods, services, nodes, deployments. Moving on to phase five, we have monitoring and observability, which is also very core to the DevOps principles. So monitoring tools like Prometheus and Grafana collect metrics and logs from applications and infrastructure, set up dashboards for visualization and alerting. The good thing is both of these are open source and you can host your own Grafana instance and a Prometheus instance. So Go ahead and do that for your containerized applications and see what metrics are important to collect for your infrastructure and application. Second is logging. So centralize and analyze logs for troubleshooting and insights. Most of the cloud providers, doesn't matter which one you have chosen, AWS, Azure, or GCP, have some kind of log aggregation. Set those up. For AWS, you have 
CloudWatch logs, see how you can query them and how you can analyze them. Or the EL case stack is also famous. So that is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And that is optional. Now, going with additional considerations, you need to have at least one programming language knowledge, and that can be Python, JavaScript, or Go. I recommend Python, and this is helpful for scripting and automation. Security. Learn about common security threats and best practices. Soft skills. Communication and collaboration is very important within DevOps. And then I also want to include some tips for your success. So first one is very important. It's hands-on projects. Apply concepts by building personal projects or contributing to open source. Community. Join online forums, attend meetups, and learn from others. Certifications. Consider certifications to demonstrate your skills, right? Few that I recommend is the AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Pro or the AZ400, which is Azure DevOps Engineer Expert. Again, this is a condensed roadmap. Be prepared to dive deeper into each topic as you learn or as you progress. So if you look at the canvas, this is what the roadmap looks like. I'll share this resource in the description. But also, if you want to follow this roadmap, I have a resource called the DevOps Guide. Go check it out. You can see it is free and open source. And I have put some amazing resources. So if you're looking for, you know, which book should I read, which course should I take, or which video should I watch about version control or CICD or IEC, go check this resource out. It has everything. And yeah, let me know if you have any feedback. But yeah, that covers up how I would learn DevOps in 2024. I hope you found the video helpful. Please make sure if you're new to the channel to like and subscribe as it helps this video with the algorithm. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.